Welcome to the next presentation in my series of presentations about how to raise and breed queen bees. This presentation I go into how to graft queen cells, tools, tips, and techniques. Here's an overview of what we'll talk about, the tools and equipment required, how to choose a larva of the correct age for grafting. That's very important. If you graft a larva that's a bit older, it might be easier to graft, but if the larva is too old, the bees may not accept it, or it may be raised into a queen that is of lower quality. It's very important to choose a larva of the correct age when grafting queen bees. I'll talk about the various techniques of grafting and some of the tips and tricks to ensure success. Before I go any further, however, you know I really need to stress that learning how to graft queen bees, it really is a hands-on uh, process. There's only so much you can learn about, you know, from watching videos like this one or reading or studying. Uh, whenever I give this series of presentations at a all-day symposium about queen bee breeding, we always take a break after this presentation is done and then we all practice in small groups how to graft. Some people take to grafting much more quickly than others. Others it's a, maybe don't have a quite as good hand-eye coordination. It takes a little bit longer. But I believe that anybody can learn grafting as long as they're, they, they, they keep at it, they practice, 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 and they don't give up. You might find that you'd rather use another technique for um, raising queen bees, but grafting really is a great technique, and that's why it is the most popular technique among professional queen bee breeders and those of us who are sidelines who raise any amount of queen bees. Let's talk about the tools and equipment required. Basically, you need a grafting tool, something to scoop that larva up with some royal jelly and then put her into a, a cell cup where the bees will be able to raise her into a queen cell. You need a frame where you can put those grafted cups. If you have old eyes like mine, you'll need good magnification and good lighting. And then somewhere out of the way, out of the wind, that where you can perform your graft. Some of the types of grafting tools available include metal or rigid plastic grafting tools. They're more durable, but they do not allow you to pick up quite as much royal jelly with the larva. There's the Chinese grafting tool. Uh, you can pick up royal jelly with it and slip it off, but it is not very durable. Uh, and then I've known some older uh, beekeepers, they would use the tip of a toothpick or even a quill of a feather. Whatever works. And it, when you're starting out, I recommend trying all of these and, and see which one you have the best feel for. Myself, I prefer the Chinese grafting tool. It has a removable plunger where you can push the, the larva and the uh, royal jelly off uh, very gently to the bottom of the cell. Um, I buy multiple ones because some of them last for a while and other ones don't last very long at all. Then there's the cell cups. You know, originally when uh, beekeepers first learned how to graft queen cells, they would make queen cell cups out of wax using wooden rounded pegs dipped into beeswax multiple times and then the wax would be uh, cups would be pulled off uh, there are the the most common ones used nowadays are the jz bz plastic cups and that that's what i use i i have good results with those then you need a frame to put the cups on now sometimes i've grafted out i've been out in a in an out apiary and i found a queenless hive and they didn't have any queen cells and I had some queen cell cups in my uh, work truck, and I went over, grabbed a handful of them, went to another hive that had a queen that I liked, grafted larvae into those cups, and then I just went and pushed them on the face of the comb. You know, that was an on-the-spot type of situation where I just had to do it, and I, I could, didn't have all my equipment with me. But, uh, you know, when you're raising greater quantities of queens in a more organized situation, and it's good to have these frames where you can graft these cups and put them... Uh, onto the bars and then put that into your cell builder, your cell starter to raise into queens. Then there's magnification and lighting. Uh, sunlight is great for lighting if you turn the comb in just the right direction. The problem with being outdoors in the hot sunlight is if you're very slow the larva may get dried out and then they won't survive. So I like to graft uh, in a protected situation. Uh, it might be in the front seat of my vehicle or, or even in a little house or building. Um, and then I use something to magnify. I tend to use the jewel or the surgical loops with the central lighting. Uh, it seems to just work best. 
for grafting, I have a little building. It, it kind of looks like an outhouse, but it, it's it's not. Uh, and I have everything. I have a battery that I can use to plug in to, for a light. And then I have it's out of the wind, but it's warm. Uh, and sometimes when I'm traveling and I'm not near my home yard, I'll just graft in the front seat of my pickup truck. Choosing the right size larva to graft. When you're starting out, you might graft larger larva just for practice because it's easier to scoop them up. But then as you learn how to graft, it's very, very important to choose the youngest larva possible. The younger the larva that you graft, the better the potential quality of the future queen. Typically, you try to look for a larva that is about 12 to 24 hours. So she just hatched. She's on a bed of royal jelly but she has not formed a complete letter C. She's curving, but not yet a letter C. And in this picture, this would be the one that you want. In this picture, you know, these larvae uh, would be easy to graft, but look at them. They've already curved into a C. They're not, they're all the way curved around. So these are a bit too old. You would not want to graft these larvae for raising queens. For practice, okay, but for when you're actually gonna try to raise queens from them, you really wanna try to uh, get to where you can graft smaller larvae than that. So this is perfect. You can see two eggs, and then here's the four larvae. They're curving. They're on a, on a bed of royal jelly, but they have not curled all the way around. There's different methods of doing this. I'd use the hunt and pick method, since I only graft dozens of queens rather than hundreds or thousands of them in, at a setting. And basically, I found a brood comb where there's eggs beginning to hatch, and I just go around the edges and just look around for the right size larvae, and I pull her out and graft. If you're going to be grafting hundreds and hundreds of queens at a time, you know, then it might be better to have a breeder queen comb and just put a drawn comb in there about four or five days early so she, you know she's going to lay her eggs into that on that comb and it'll be much easier to get the right size larva very consistently and you don't have to hunt around looking for them. Wet versus dry grafting. Some of the older bee books talk about this or talk about uh, wet grafting or double grafting. Myself, I, I do dry grafting, and this is what most queen breeders I know do. Basically, using a dry grafting tool, you scoop out a bit of the royal jelly along with the larva herself, and then you put that larva and royal jelly into a, a cup that she's where she's going to be raised. The idea with wet grafting is that you'd prime the cup with royal jelly that you've saved from other cells, maybe swarm cells or whatnot. And um, immediately before grafting, you put that small amount of dilute royal jelly on the bottom so that it kind of helps you slip off that larva onto the, into the cup. Uh, and the idea is that it's a bit easier to graft. And they also thought, well, maybe by priming, you're actually giving the larva a head start. And then maybe perhaps the larva is going to do better or have a higher acceptance rate. A variation of the wet grafting is you first graft a, a set of larvae into the cups. You let them fill it with royal jelly for a day. Remove the first set of larvae. And then graft in a second set of larvae onto the royal jelly. Idea is if that second set of larvae has a head start with a lot of royal jelly, maybe it's going to be a better quality uh, queen. And the research surrounding this really shows that there's really no benefit. It did not increase the weight or quality of the queens, although priming the cups did improve acceptance a little bit. Uh, so when you're starting out, if you want to play around with putting royal jelly into a cup and grafting off of that, um, you know, that's fine. But if you're going to graft a large number of queens, you probably will just go to dry grafting especially if you're using the Chinese grafting tool or a similar set of tools. It, it's not that hard to pull a little bit of royal jelly off with the larva as you scoop her out of her cell and then, then push it back down to the bottom in the center part of the, the queen cell cup. Well, let's talk about the technique of grafting. And again, you know, no matter how much I try to explain this or talk about it, it's going to be really hard for you to learn how to do this unless you get out there and you just start practicing. you're looking for the youngest larva possible then you scoop them up and put them on into the cell into the cups that have already been placed into the bar that where you're going to put the frame 
Uh, the frame is then placed in the cell starter for the bees to feed and raise into queens, and about 10 days later, they're placed into the mating nukes, where they can emerge uh, shortly thereafter. If you're using a Chinese grafting tool, typically we come down straight down and allow the flexible tip to bend and curve under the larva and pick it up along with a little bit of the royal jelly. I try to approach the larva from the back and not the open side of where she's curving. It just seems to scoop up a little better. I try to put the larva into the center of the cell cup uh, and then using the plunger I slip her off carefully. I do not flip the larva over and if you think you did it's best to scoop it out and start over because if you scoop, flip the larva over she's not able to breathe. She breathes through the spiracles that are facing upward out of the jelly and you flip her over she can't open the other spiracles and she'll end up drowning. And here's another photo kind of showing you in, you know, in, in stages where you come down with the tip of the Chinese grafting tool, the flexible tip bends, goes under the royal jelly, and then you pull it out uh, with the larva and the royal jelly without touching the sides. If she gets stuck on the side, you know, you give up and just start over, you know, with another uh, larva. And then you put her down into the bottom of the queen cell cup in the middle. I try to approach from the back of the curve, it just seems to work a little bit better. And I try to graft from wet brood versus dried brood. These photos are from Randy Oliver's wonderful website, I cannot recommend it enough for you to check out. Uh, and, and he was showing, you know, well-fed larva versus dry larva that's not well-fed. And as you can see, the difference is the amount of royal jelly. And so not only are these larvae healthier, but it's also a lot easier for you to graft. And so that's why not only am I, I feeding up my cell builder, cell starter colonies, but my breeding colony too, you know, making sure they have plenty of pollen or protein supplement if you have to, if there's nothing coming in. Uh, they'll pr the nurse bees will produce more royal jelly, and it's much easier to graft uh, from wet brood versus with lots of royal jelly versus dry brood that does not have royal jelly or not much. Now, if you're going to use uh, some of the more rigid grafting tools, then you'll have to use a slightly different technique. You come in from the side and you sort of angle it up. Um, some folks like to even pull down the sides a little bit of the, uh, of the cell to make it a little bit easier to pull the larva out. And here's a, a little video of me looking through my viewfinder trying to find the proper larva to graft. And so that's an egg. That, that's going to be too small, obviously. We don't graft eggs. Or no, there's a larva in there, sorry. Um, that one is not bad. You could graft that one. There's an egg. So I just kind of look around to find the right size larva. Oh, there's another egg. We're in the right place. And there, that one looks perfect. So perfect. See, so she's starting to curve. She's not much bigger than an egg, and there's a little bit of royal jelly. That's a perfect size larva to graft. That's exactly what you're looking for and what you want. So it's sometimes easier just to do it fast. You know, it's like riding a bike. If you try to ride it slowly and explain what you're doing, you'd end up falling off the bike. Instead, you come right down, pull up the larva with a little bit of royal jelly. There she is. And then I put her down into the bottom of the queen cell cup. And if she's a little off, I can move her around. But there she is, right at the bottom of the queen cell cup, exactly where you want her to be. Again, this is easier to learn by doing rather than it is by trying to explain or show videos. Well, that brings me to the end of the presentation about how to graft. Again, if I was doing this in real life in person, we would now uh, go and start practicing our grafting techniques, uh, you know, in, in real life with actual with actual uh, newly hatched larva. I can't really do that because this is obviously a YouTube video, but I encourage you to try to go out there and do your own and, and learn how to do this. And to have the greatest success with grafting, make sure you have the proper tools and equipment Try out all the various grafting tools to decide which one has the best feel for you. And even though you might practice at first grafting lar larvae that are a little bit larger than ideal just because it's easier to, to learn the technique, once you are really trying to graft in order to raise queens, try to graft the smallest larvae you possibly can. Keep them from drying out. I try to graft indoors in a vehicle. Uh, if I'm slow 
or taking a while. The, gra the graphs that are already grafted, I might cover them with a warm, moist cloth. Uh, the temperature, you know, if it's a little bit cool, they'll do fine. But drying out, that they really will, they d really don't like that, and, and you'll lose a lot of larva that way. Be careful not to flip the larva over, as it will die. And then practice. Practice a lot. Uh, and eventually it'll become second nature, and you can just do it um, without even hardly thinking about it. So that, that's the end of the grafting presentation, and now I'm going to move on to other topics, uh, including how to set up your mating nukes, uh, designing your breeding program, and some other uh, topics. Uh, thank you again.